So we're here at the Volkswagen press conference, and who are you? My name is Bernard Bello. And what do you do? Well, my background is engineering. I built an electric car in 96. So I'm really involved with clean tech, meaning clean technologies. It can be a car, it can be a boat, a submarine, or a VTOL, vertical takeoff and landing. You also took care of uh, some of the first uh, electric motorbike race? Yes, of course. So the first electric motorcycle ha uh, race happened in Isla Men in England. And then uh, uh, we, I was responsible for organizing the first race in the U.S. That happened in 2010. Very interesting because we had a lot of different technologies coming up, from AC to DC, uh, motors like locals, OEMs, whatnot. Now there's like zero motors. There's a bunch of brands doing electric motorbikes that are pretty cool. Yes, it is. There is. There have been some changing. You want me to look? Yeah. There have been some changing. So Bramo uh, was sold to Polaris. Polaris acquired that brand, and then they went to Alamein with uh, B Victory. They changed the name to Victory, and not, not much happened there. But uh, the vice president from Bramo, Brian Wisman, went to Zero Motorcycles in Scotts Valley. And I'm going to say it's one of the best companies right now in the United States. They, they make their own motor, they make their own batteries, and uh, I like their product. I was doing videos with them like eight years ago. And uh, how about, um, what, what do you think is happening with the EV market? Tesla is like doing an amazing job, right? Tesla yes. is just, oh my God. And then everybody is like, uh, who, who's going to beat them? Well, that's a long story. I have my own opinion. I think I like, I like everybody. Tesla was leading, but like Mr. Uh, right now what is happening, BYD took uh, the lead, and companies like Hyundai, uh, the CEO uh, Jose Munoz from Madrid, is pushing really hard. So I think right now we're in a flux scenario where things are changing, and I think uh, uh, the Chinese technology is good. Batteries, CATL, the BYD, uh, Seal, compared with the Model 3 from Tesla, I'm going to say that uh, it was head to head and it's cheaper. I just did a video about the BYD Seal in uh, China. It sells for only 24,000 euro, but for some reason in Europe it's 48,000. What's the price difference? Why cannot be sold for the same price in Europe? Do you know? That's a very good question. I'm saying, you know, uh, because right now they don't have uh, competition. Right, but the only competition is the Model Three. But I'm going to say, like as other brands came in, the price the price will be forced down. It will be better. I think a 20k price will be it will it will spread like wildfire. I want to see a 15k, a really good uh, electric car uh, like the BYD Dolphin is 14,000 euro in China. I agree. I agree. The only thing you can get in the U.S. now will be a Fiat you know, which only has less than 100 uh, miles of range, and uh, something like the Nissan, but it's, uh, I agree, I agree with you. Something a little bit bigger. What's the person you were talking about in, from Madrid? Jose Munoz. What, what Jose Munoz is a very charismatic person. He was a nuclear engineer in Madrid. He never had a car. He constantly lost the train at 11.30 in the evening and asked his girlfriend to pick him up. His girlfriend gave him a car, said, here, you have a car. He made the ranks through Nissan and Toyota, and now, in my opinion, he's the best CEO in the world at the helm of uh, Hyundai. So it's a Hyundai CEO. Yeah, global CEO. Global CEO. Global and CEO. And he's making uh, one of the best EV uh, alternatives to Tesla, right? In my opinion, he is, because he's, he has good price, they have good quality, they have come a long way. Long way. They came in 88 to the US with Excel, and now not only Hyundai, also Kia and Genesis. There is three brands under the same umbrella. What is their strategy? I think the strategy is basically increase market share with electric mobility without thinking twice, you know? And they also keep their, uh, they are keeping the combustion cars and it's a good selling brand. The brand sells very well. And uh, what do you think about Volkswagen? Because uh, a few years ago, everybody was telling me that Volkswagen is gonna totally beat um, Tesla. Are they using the Tesla charger ports or? Um, what, what's, the, what's happening with Volkswagen? What well, do you think? I think Volkswagen has gone through a lot of turmoil in the U.S. Their sales were never really big. I remember back uh, when Pichet Ritter was the CEO, 
and the project from Moonraker uh, with Oliver Schmidt. They tried to conquer market share, but definitely I am a diehard Volkswagen person with GTI as a European, but uh, there's still some homework to do in, uh, in the American market, that's my opinion. Uh, so here at the CES, I see uh, there's a GTI Golf right here. Yes. Um, so what, what, do you, what do you like about the GTI? I like it that it looks like the new GTIs, but I like better the one that was in Munich. They have, they have a prototype that they, they just told me is gonna go into the market, uh, into production next year in Germany. And uh, I like that, it's pure roots from Germany, and it's gonna be, in, it's gonna be two door, and it's gonna look like the Mark I, Mark II, Mark III, Mark IV GTI. This to me, a four door, it's not a so uh, the two door, um, is there any chance it's going to be affordable or they don't talk about affordability? No, it probably won't be affordable. 40, I'm, go 50, I'm going 000. to guess, unless they make a Lupo, like something is smaller, I'm going to guess that the, these cars will go, will go higher than a Model 2 from Tesla, things like that. I'm going to say it will be at least 30. The, the shape uh, looks to me a lot like how it was with a, a, a combustion engine, no? Yeah. The, it, when you make electric, you can change the shape, no? If you see the GTI from Munich, it has the resemblance of the old one, and it has innovation. It's kind of like a, it's kind of like a Porsche 911, right? You see a Porsche 911 for the 70s, and the, and you see one of the uh, GT3s, and it's still, it's an appealing car. But this, to me, this is a bit dull. You know? And uh, here, the CS Las Vegas. Uh, they claim to be the biggest car show, one of the biggest car shows in the world, because uh, it's going to be a bunch of EVs. Well, I would what are we going to see? Some amazing EV this week? The history for CES, the first one, the first person that came here with an electric car was Alejandro Agar from Spain with the Formula E. He won the uh, Innovation Award. I don't remember if that was... 2011, maybe it was 2000. He was at EBS Barcelona in 2011. I'm going to guess that was uh, 12, but don't quote me on that. And after that, Faraday Future came, Fisker came. So actually, he was the one that, uh, that opened the door. So specifically, you have a lot of electric cars, but I won't compare this with any auto show. Even though I think the auto shows are going down, I was in Munich and I was in LA. And in LA, for example, uh, Volkswagen was there, but Mercedes and Porsche are not there anymore. So there is a paradigm that is changing. How about SEMA? SEMA, SEMA is different because SEMA is a specialized cars. There is some electric cars, but it's more like muscle cars, pickups, off-roads, and I'm going to say some most monster electric cars, but a regular electric car like this is not a place for them. The Shanghai Auto Show. The Shanghai Auto Show is really good. Actually, Volkswagen has a joint venture with uh, a company from China, and they just announced production of a small model in Mexico with a sodium battery. That's very impressive to me. And that's a small car. I mean, the and it's actually movie. shipping the sodium battery car. Yeah. It's actually shipping, right? Well, it's in Mexico. I'm going to guess it can only sell to Mexico now, but because the NAFTA treaty, technically a car made in Mexico, could come to the US, not in Argentina. Like for example, the Volkswagen Amarok, is interesting, can never come to the US. It can come to Mexico, but it's not under the NAFTA treaty. So I was the biggest fan of Project Better Place uh, 12 years ago. I remember. And, and I, I, since then, I'm still thinking the future has to be battery swap, but everybody tells me I'm wrong. Do you disagree or do you agree that it could be... Because when you talk about the new sodium battery, for example, or when you talk about those 4680 cells from Tesla, or, you know, they're all like in development, and two years later, there will be like 20, 30% improvement. So why do you want to buy an EV and, and, and have an outdated battery in just two years? So that's why I want to swap. For micromobility, which will be a bicycle, a motorcycle, a scooter, or, oh, you know, in English, a scooter can be a motorcycle and it can also be the other one that they use. For that, swapping makes total sense. For a real car, you need to get a thousand miles in the car with the battery that it will come and happen. In my opinion, 
the way that JB Straubel, the CTO from Tesla, pushed the lithium battery, it was wrong. Because lithium cobalt already, in the, he used laptop batteries, they were already burning. They changed the chemistry. But there is, you know, there is recycle issues, there is charging issues, there is battery management system issues. So I think is the research should have been done and go with a battery that is less contaminated, more reliable. Like right now in Finland, there are testing batteries that are made out of salt and sodium. Out of what? Salt, C-A-L-N-A. So this is what I think. But obviously he pushed the envelope. But right now, the supply chain is tied into Asia from the lithium and the gasoline car, the fuel, you can say the battery in a way is the fuel, and the combustion car is tied to the Middle East. So if somebody can make use of material for a battery that can keep the price down, then the electric cars will go down 30%. Uh, as I understand, uh, most of the Tesla batteries right now are iron phosphate, no? Uh, they, don't, they don't use the cobalt uh, anymore. Yes, they change the chemistry. And it has a little bit less density, but it's much more affordable and better to recycle, or? It's more with the issues with the fire, you know, and the chemistry. However, it's good that you say that because what they call vertical integration from the, from the batteries, the people don't understand that to make a battery, you need to get the cells or the pouch and then put to, it's like a Lego that you build it, right? And as you see the YouTubes from, uh, from the Cybertruck, you will understand you start with high voltage, like Porsche Taycan did 800 volts. And then the whole system is cheaper because you need less current, less copper, <laughs> right? But right now there is lithium in Nevada. So if you can get the lithium, you can make the cell. And from the cell, think about Lego, you can make the battery, then you can change it you know, the supply chain, and then the price will go down. You should remember Panasonic was trying to uh, help uh, Elon Musk to do this in the cyber, in the first uh, cyber, excuse me, cyber gigafactory in, uh, in Sparks, Nevada. What do you think about the cyber truck? The cyber truck? Yeah. What do you think about this? Uh, it's, it's ugly and powerful, but you know, you can, you can love or hate Elon Musk, but when you see the engineer, He's using 48 volt, you know, like I described to you. So there is a lot of clever engineering. They say that the car can seal the battery and can semi-float, you know, almost like an amphibious car. The other interesting thing, they took the car, the car in a racetrack against a go car, and because they have a stream by wire, the handling was something that you cannot even imagine. And then the structure of the metal they are using I don't want to say it's destructible, but I guarantee you, if somebody hits you, the other guy will get hurt more. Do you think the industry is going to copy this? Because as far as I understand, Elon Musk says he open sources the patents. Is that true that everybody can just take the designs and start copying it? To a point. To a point. So I, I think the materials used in the cyber track, they're, uh, they're uh, very good. I think it's very difficult to manufacture because you cannot do a stamping. So I don't have an opinion, but I'm impressed with the technology in the Cybertruck, not with the looks, for me. You know <laughs> yeah. what I mean? But if you want to be different... The young guys, they like this kind of a video game look. It could be, it could be, yeah. And wh what else is the story, the big story in the industry? What do you want to talk about? Like you told me that I have to look for something at the next Geneva Auto Show, for example. What's going to be the big story in 2024? I mean, to me... I like, in clean tech, like I said in the beginning, there is the land, the cars, there's the ocean, the ships, and the submergibles, and then there is the air. So to me, the big story, in the United States, we're competing for veto, vertical takeoff and landing between California and Florida, especially before the Olympic Games. So there is gonna be a lot of things happening in LA. There is uh, people talking a lot, a lot about VTOLs, there is hobby, and then there is the Omega project from Tesla. And in my intuition tells me that Tesla will come up with, uh, with some kind of aircraft device or vertical takeoff and landing or whatever they want to call it. They are going to disrupt 
commercial airline industry? No. Airbus this, and Boeing? No. This will be last mile. So let me explain this to you. If you have a, if you have a private jet, if you have a private jet, you come, for example, to, to come to Santa Monica or you come to San Diego, and then the last mile, you usually do with a helicopter, it's really noisy. Arnold used to do that. So if you have a veto, very good takeoff and landing, you can go from the Carlsbad Airport to Rancho Santa Fe, six passengers. So coming from Europe to there, it may cost you a million dollars with the Gulfstream. If you pay $10,000 you know, to go with a veto, I think that's a good business model to do the last mile. I'd like to see it uh, be 100% safe. Like if one of the, uh, what do you call it, the rotors breaks, yeah. it's, it's not going to crash. It's, it needs to be uh, foolproof, right? 100% safe. Is it going to be? Well, there is a startup like Lilium with new technologies. There's companies like Dell, uh, helicopters doing it. In my opinion, somebody with a lot of aerospace experience in vertical takeoff has a very chance to be safe. All right, okay.